Um, and so uh, the next reference, uh, J.P. Moreland, he's, um, I think now he's, uh, he's still teaching out there in California. Biola yeah, and whatnot. Still going, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, he might be an emergence professor now. But anyway, he, he's for many years uh, engaged in the most sophisticated analysis, they tell us, by any classical apologist of the nature of science and of its relation to Christian uh, theological truths. And so they suggest that the burden of Moreland's extensive research and writing on science and Christianity can be summed up in four headings. And so they're going to walk us through each one of these four headings. Right. So why don't you start us off? Well, of course, the first one is that he argues against naturalism and especially scientism, that science can legitimately be practiced within the framework of a theistic worldview. Scientism is the belief that science alone Science alone yields genuine knowledge or truth. And J.P. Moreland argues that scientism is self-refuting because the claim that science alone produces truth is not learned scientifically, right? <laughs> You're not titrating the scientific method out of a test tube. Uh, it, it's, it's a procedure. It's, it's, a, it's a way uh, that we uh, uh, find the truth, but it's not, uh, it of itself does not produce the scientific method. Uh, and 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 uh, right. you're, you're, you, so it's a it's a you, it's you a the philosophical worm. yeah yeah exactly yeah, it's a philosophical claim right. about science right. it's not a, a, a scientific yeah. claim right yeah. yes so he documents extensively the various sorts of limits to science that preclude any sort of scientism right and so first he then argues against naturalism and specifically scientism because scientism says, you know, only science produces truth. Well, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Why Do you have we a study truth? for that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we get truth in all kinds of ways and the claim itself is self-refuting, mm -hmm. right? Secondly, uh, they point out that Moreland argues, um, urges caution in assuming uh, a naivety with regard to realist views of science. So mm -hmm. there's a distinction between realism in terms of how you view scientific theories versus some type of pragmatic or instrumentalist approach, right? And so the realist says, well, what scientific theories are supposed to do is to give us truth about the world. The entities that they posit really do exist, those types of things. So that's a realist approach. Science gives us real truth about an external reality, the world that exists. The instrumentalist, on the other hand, says, well, what is this notion of uh, why are you worried about truth as long as the theory works? Right. As long as it produces results and helps us to predict and explain, that's all we need. We don't need to say that it's, you know, it gives us truth about the world. So that's the distinction here that Moreland is trying to uh, uh, make here. And so what they say is Moreland urges caution in assuming a uh, naively realist view of science. So although he thinks scientific theory should be understood along realist lines, right, that it gives us the truth and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. In the absence of sufficient evidence to the contrary, he cautions that in some instances we should be uh, reticent to grant that a scientific theory describes reality as it actually is, right? So he said he hedges his bet here. Yes, generally speaking, science, science and scientific theories uh, you know, are aiming to give us the truth, and they often do, but we need to be careful because uh, sometimes they don't. And so an instrumentalist view might might be helpful. So notice, if the theory attempts to explain, he uh, argues here, in totality, a phenomenon that lies outside the proper domain of science, or if it conflicts with a rationally well-established conclusion about reality, then the theory should be viewed as a construction uh, that does not describe reality itself. So then we have we can move over into the instrumentalist view about science. Well, it may not be giving us the truth, right, about reality, but it's helpful and uh, it's uh, you know it allows us to make predictions and that sort of thing. And so we can use the theory as long as it does that until a better one comes along. So that's that's the second notion that uh, Moreland said. Be cautious, he's suggesting, uh, about the realist view of science. Yes, in general, that's the aim of science, but sometimes theories don't do that. Right. So who knew science was so complicated? 
then again, <laughs> th th this is this is the 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 reasonable faiths, and so uh, the the classical model focuses on reason, and so of course they're going to critique uh, any uh, kind of view of of uh, scientific um, uh, one-upsmanship here uh, f for um, being under the purview of of reason and logic. Okay, uh, the. We've done two. The third one is that Moreland explores the various models for relating science and theology and explains why the two fields should be viewed as overlapping over against those who would protect religion or faith from science by regulating theology to the realm of values and spiritual matters. We, we only talk about uh, theology on Sundays. Uh, we do our science on Monday through uh, Friday, and then everyone gets a day off on, on Saturday. Well, nope. He says that uh, um, instead of uh, uh, regulating those two, uh, uh, the realm of values and spiritual matters. He insists that theology does deal with some aspects of the physical world, such as the creation by God, right? Uh, 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 Genesis 1, let's, let's start there. What, what, what happens uh, in the beginning? God creates. Oh, okay. Well, now all of a sudden we have to do science. We have to figure out uh, how the world uh, operates and exists and uh, how we can harness it. Uh, and so we're, uh, by, by those questions right there, uh, we're already through uh, Genesis 1 through 3. Well, thus, yeah. science and theology really do interact on common ground and effort must be made to reconcile or, or integrate science and theology. You can't just have their own spheres. They must, uh, they must be uh, in some way uh, overlapping, simpatico, uh, uh, in relationship uh, to each other. All right, so notice what we have here. We've seen now at least three approaches with regard to the relationship between uh, uh, science and uh, religion, we might say, or, or Christianity, right? First approach was this conflict approach where they you know, are at odds with one another, right? The second approach, which uh, Moreland here criticizes, is this approach that says, no, they're really not at conflict because they are you know, dealing with separate aspects of the world or of reality, uh, science with facts and religion with values. So that's a, a, a second approach, right? This kind of separate approach that each one takes. Moreland doesn't agree with either of those two approaches, that they're in total conflict or that they totally separate it in terms of what they deal with. His suggestion is, no, there's an interaction between science and um and religion and Christianity. And so we should use both to help us to see, to get a, a full orbed picture of the way the world is, right? So this interactionism uh, is, uh, or integration, we might say, is what Moreland is arguing for here mm -hmm. in this third position. All right, and then finally, uh, Moreland argues that creationism right, can be a legitimate idea within the discipline of science. And so this is a really big claim. This actually has been um, argued in court, right. at least two major uh, arguments in court, one in Arkansas, the other in Pennsylvania. And um, in both cases, design was being asked to be part of uh, the scientific curriculum. And uh, folks are arguing, no, it's religion and not science, right? Mm -hmm. And so Moreland argues that creationism can be a legitimate idea within the discipline of science. He, his main contention here is that science should not be defined in such a way as to exclude creationism a priori, right? That is, we don't even consider it uh, from the discipline of science. His approach to science well illustrates the central method of classical apologists. He, his objections to scientism and naturalism, as well as to definitions of science that exclude creationism, focus on the question begging and self defeating nature of these positions, right? So, notice Mullen would argue something like this. If you say, well, for instance, uh, that uh, this idea that there was a designer that created the universe based on the observations that we made. Well, there are folks that argue, no, no, you can't say that because that's religion and not science right. when we're dealing with science. And Moreland argues, no, not what we should be doing with regard to science is coming up with the best explanation 
whether or not it, you know, the scientists agree with it or not. What is the best explanation for our observation? And if the best explanation is a designed universe that implies a designer, then that should be part of a scientific explanation. It is mm -hmm. the best explanation, and that's what science is after. So that's kind of uh, this fourth point that they're trying to make here with regard to Moreland and his argue, arguing that creationism can be a legitimate idea within the discipline of science. Right. Or you just have to argue that uh, there's been no scientific break, breakthroughs until, what, the Enlightenment or Darwin or, I don't know, the 1900s, uh, you know, uh, and clearly that's not the case.